Hello YouTube, it's Deezer HD here with uh, a text blowing away type effect tutorial that I promised. As you can see I'm now on my iMac, it's a 27 inch quad core i5 model and it's a beast and I love it. I'm never going back to Windows ever again because they're crap in my opinion. So what we're going to be creating today, if you haven't seen it already, I didn't actually render enough keyframes, uh, frames sorry, so it did end quite suddenly which isn't good. So um, this is the type of effect we're going to get with the text blowing away backwards into the background as you can see We've got some textures in the back um, on the front but let's get straight into it first thing you want to do is do your render settings um, the width I put to 1280 um, 720 for the height so that's full 720p make sure it's on all frames in the save module you want to put it to PNG and put alpha channel on and pick where you want to save it it's up to you and I put it on 16 bit channel um, for the multi pass you want to enable that and right mouse click and click depth and then go back into the save and click somewhere where you want the depth to be saved and also save that as a PNG um, I advise putting them in different folders making a depth folder and a regular image folder because there's going to be a lot of a lot of images and it's going to be hard to tell the difference between the two or hard to sort them so uh, it's because it's the whole animation is images so next you want to go to anti-aliasing and put best and 2x2 two two. that's what I did you can put on animation or still images up to you and then ray depth 6 R reflection depth is 2 and shadow depth is 6 again and that's all I did. I didn't put any uh, ambient occlusion or global illumination on. So there we go. Render settings are done. The, the next thing I did was I actually, you won't have this because I actually haven't finished making it yet. But um, what I did was I used one of my light kits. You can build like a light, the lights yourself, like um, air, put some area lights, 50% intensity on the area shadows, etc build whatever you want like that but what I used was my spotlight type studio um, deleted the replace me and with the lights in studio this uh, null I just hid it from the camera like that so then when we render it's got nothing so next thing I did was I think I, I added some text and obviously it's a bit big so um, I move. I made it a bit smaller. I can move the camera around and whatnot. Do whatever I want. Um, that looks good. And let's just put tutorial or whatever. Oops. Put a question mark. There we go. And um, the depth about 50. I think I put the depth as or 40 actually. Uh, subdivision. I put about 40 subdivisions on there. Uh, caps, I put fillet caps by I think it was 3 and 1 just to give it a nice smooth edge and then with the type you need to do this you need to put it on quadrangles and I put the width down here on re I click regular grid the width to 5 centimeters but um, I, th I think we need to change the font so we can get as many as we can around the front so I think I may have used um, Helvetica Bold maybe. Have a look. That's got a few more. But um, I'm going to find a font quickly. Maybe Bebas. Is, I love that font. Bebas. Uh, there we go. Let's try Bebas. So that's got a few more. But I was actually looking for more than that. have another look because if not I'll just check my other project file and I'll tell you the exact font I use so let's do that actually so here's the one I used um, and I've put because because for the tag you have to put it as an editable object so I actually can't see that so that's a complete fail um, what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna leave it as aerial or something it doesn't it d all you want to do is get make sure you have a lot of squares on the front I think I used maybe Arial. Have a look. Because um, in the cap section, 
can make the triangles. You get a few more on triangles. Um, maybe if I brought this down, there we go. Look, if you put it down to about one for the width, then the font is just Arial. Everyone will have Arial, so that's good. Make sure your text fits in your frame, because be even though you can see the line here from where the studio ends, it doesn't actually matter, because you're not going to see it anyway. So there we go, you can see there, just says tutorial. And take off global illumination, there we go. As you can see, there we got tutorial in the studio look. I then made a new m uh, material. I put the colour as like a baby blue type colour. Not not too strong, just like a nice, nice little baby blue colour. The texture for now, and I just moved the move the brightness down and the reflections and I put that on my text like that just have a quick render yep that's looking good just like the original well uh, maybe move the text up a tad it's all up to your preferences really there we go yep that's looking good take those horizontals right that's good. Still making sure it fits within the frame frame size. You can see a bit of the spotlight leg there, but it doesn't matter. There we go. So now the next thing you want to do is when you're happy with your text, hit C on your keyboard to make it editable. Right mouse click, select children, C again. Right mouse click, select children. Right mouse click, connect and delete. And that makes it just one object um, for the text. I then um, I added a cloth tag. So you go right mouse click, cloth tags, and cloth. First thing I did was I took the gravity off and put it to zero because we don't want it flying anywhere. Um, the wind directions I left as zero zero, and that one I, s I left as one. Now the strength I put to about three. The turbulent strength I put to one. And the speed was 2, I believe. And then I think I put the drag up to about 60%. And the lift maybe to about 35. Now it looks good. Then I went into the tag properties and click use tear. And then if you, as you can see, we've already got this effect happening onto our text. So if I do a quick render view now, you can already see that we've got this quite a nice effect going it does take quite a while to render with all these shadows but what I did do is um, I haven't done it in this one but if I go into my softbox properties and I'll put the shadow down to about 50 that make it a much quicker render because there's not as many shadows all of these are uh, when you when my light kit comes out everything is fully customizable by just one null by the way just uh, quickly tell you that so there we go we've got the full effect already which is good and then I went to simulation um, cloth and I just added the cloth nerves just to make everything look a bit smoother um, the next thing I did was I added uh, another camera in so c click the camera con command if you're on a Mac control if you're on a con uh, Windows CV and I just put um, saved it as angle 2 and this one's Angle one. Right, that's good. So then you can go click this box here to make so you can see through the camera. And then I made a different angle. Um, you can find an angle that suits you best. I am. Um, there, that looks good. And you want to go on both of the cameras. Um, you could add the depth of field if you wanted to, but it's purely up to you. I'm just going to leave it like that, and unless I think I may have added a rear blur. So if I do a quick render for that now, you'll see the the background is blurred. The the render does take quite a while with the light kit at the moment, so um, that's why. And we'll see the blur comes in at the end. It, what it does is it does the path of uh, 
it goes over it all first then the blur you'll see it will come in so actually what I did was I had a target object as well but that's not necessary as we're going to be rendering as you can see here hit the multi pass and we're going to put a depth in and then you can choose where you want to save this as well so that's all good um, so what you want to do is I rendered I put this timeline to 150 but I think about 250 is probably a bit better because obviously you saw that mine ended quite quickly so uh, the first angle this one here I rendered the whole thing all the way through in that angle so y that's what you want to do first is render that and then when that's done you want to go into this angle and I rendered I think it was um, from frame 30 to frame 100 and I put that in at that angle so when I play you can see it coming from this angle as well and you see all the, the text is floating and flying off like this so that's that's basically what you need to do in Cinema 4D so when you've done that and rendered it out with the depth passes and everything like that you need to come out of Cinema 4D which I'm going to do um, I'm not going to save it and we're going to load up After Effects because I'm just going to use the one that I did in the example. I'm going to use this these project files here, like that. So um, first thing you want to do is go into After Effects. Might take a while to open, but then we've got all of our sequences um, and the depth passes. So for each one, well I'll show you my files that I've got here, if I zoom in a little bit for you. Um, my depth passes, I've got two passes, I've got the first camera angle with all of these passes and you can see they're just a straight alpha pass there with the depth and I've got pass two which is from this angle and the white bit is where the blur and this bit's in focus. Okay, so uh, And I did the same for the sequences, I've got two folders, sequence one and sequence two. So when you come into After Effects, right mouse click here in the project, um, import multiple files is what you want to do. So I'm going to find my file, C4D, Motion Design. Right, and the first thing I did was Sequence 1. So I click the first one, Command A or Control A, PNG Sequence, make sure that's checked, open. Um, then I went back, Sequence 2, Command A. PNG sequence, open, then I went back again to uh, the depth passes, command A, PNG sequence, open, and then I went back just once more, command A, PNG sequence, and open, and click cancel. So the first thing I did was I made um, two different compositions, so I've got, the P and I've got the first sequence, so you drag that down to this black box. And as you can remember, we did make it a 16-bit colored channel. So um, it says 8-bit here. If you hold down Alt on your keyboard and click, it goes to 16. So that's all good. And you can see we've got our animation here, blah, blah, blah. It looks cool. So I did that, and then I got the pass 1 and put that on top. And as you can see, it's all black and white. So you, uh, you want to click that to make sure it's not there. And then on the example layer, so you click the little eye. And on the example well that's what mine's called but yours will be sequence one I'd say so uh, what we want to do now is go effect blur and sharpen and camera lens blur then the blur map you want to put this to pass one or whatever you saved as the depth and as you can see there we go and now wherever we go you can see some will be blurred in the background we've got all of this in focus so that's all good um, we want it that's that one done and then we get going back into our project get example 2 drag down to this black box and that makes a new composition get pass 2 put it on the top and make sure it's not visible and put another again camera lens blur and put the pass in there so now you can see this background bit is blurred and this bit's all in focus and then what I did was I a new composition in um, well I got the first sequence and dragged it into a new composition and I went command K or control K and put final 
render. That's the name. So we've got the first sequence and we want the second sequence in as well. So as you can see, that we got this one in the top. So we actually don't want that. So firstly, you want to find a file for the background. So what I'm going to do is get a new finder window and we need to get a nice background that we can use. So let's find a nice I've got materials pack textures. I think I just used keep one of these. Let's just say this one for now. Let's uh, get After Effects open again. I'm going to put this in here. There we go. We can see it there, and then we can just drop it to the bottom, and we've got this nice texture in the background. Um, and do the same for the other one. So we've both got we've got the texture on both. So now in the final render, you can only see one or the other. Okay. So now you want to find a point. You can hide the top one. And in this clip, you want to find the point where it looks as if this clip is starting. So this one starts around where it just starts to bend and stuff. So maybe one second or a bit less. And then we can drag this and put that on top. And you can see now it goes like, oh, oh we make it visible again. And as you can see, go like this and then it hits this camera angle and then when this this one's done it goes back to this camera angle there we go so now we want to go to a new adjustment layer so layer new adjustment layer and if you don't have video copilot for optical flares um, I suggest you get them it's a very powerful plugin as I've said in previous tutorials and it's very very good for motion design too I'm going to go into optical flares and you can see this little window opens. So, um, and I renamed my adjustment layer OF for optical flares. And I want to put the render mode to over original. And what I did was I put one light up here and I changed it to one of my preferences. So we'll put there we go. I've got that one like a nice, that nice color there. Just change the brightness just down a tad. And I command D or control D to duplicate that and then put it right over to the other side. Um, and you can do change the color of this to whatever you want. I'm going to have it like a nice blue because blue and yellow generally work quite well together. Or well, amber. And as you can see, there we go. We've got quite a nice little contrast of lights there. Um, and then on both of them, I did flicker and I put, like let's say, speed is 20, the amount is 30 on one of them. Um, the same for the other one, 20 and 30, there we go, and then you just hit render, you can add music, sound, whatever you want, and that's basically how to make that effect, as you can see, and we've got this nice blurs in the background, and you can go on both of these, and you can go effect, and you can add color correction, magic bullet looks, or anything like that. So on both of them, you can just muck around with the colors and whatnot. I don't know what you want to do, but um, it's really up to you. So thanks very much for watching, guys, and please like this video. The next, If you like this about 10 to 20 times between that number, I'll bring out another preview, and if that gets likes, then I'll do another tutorial. So it'll just, just tell me if you like this type of stuff. Um, so just like, favorite the video and stuff so uh, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial